you're probably familiar with Pringles, one of the most recognizable snack brands in the world. But around the same time as Pringles debuted, there was another chip being introduced to the market, also called Pringles. So what happens when two similar products have the same name? Hi everyone and welcome to Side Stories, a new series of The Vintage Company where I talk about interesting stories that I came across while researching but didn't quite fit into a main history video. And this is the story of Pringles versus Pringles. It was 1968. Two behemoths of the corporate world were hard at work on a new snack food product. One was Procter & Gamble, a company known for its soap and laundry detergent who had begun diversifying into food products. The other was General Foods, a company who was already well established among consumers for its food and beverages, owning household names like Post, Birdseye, Jell-O, Kool-Aid, Baker's Chocolate, and Maxwell House. In September 1968, Procter & Gamble began testing a new type of chip made of dehydrated potato flakes. Two months later, General Foods also began test marketing a new type of chip, this one made of popcorn. Strangely enough, both products used the same brand name, Pringles. Now, there was a slight difference between the brand names. Procter & Gamble's Pringles had an apostrophe. General Foods' Pringles did not. But of course, both chip names sounded the same when spoken. A General Foods spokesperson told a reporter, it was an accident. And this assertion was supported by the sheer volume of new products and their brand names being marketed every day. As Sales Management Magazine noted, this type of thing could be happening more often from now on as names become harder to come by. But not everyone was convinced that the near-identical brand names was a coincidence. Chicago Daily News writer George Lazarus speculated, Marketing espionage being what it is today, one could easily surmise that someone in P&G's marketing arsenal was doing some super sleuthing at General Foods. Or vice versa. After all, sales competition today fosters the need for expert spy work. And a Procter & Gamble spokesperson stated, We were really surprised. You bet some eyebrows were raised around here when General Foods came out with its product. Now you might think because Procter & Gamble introduced their Pringles product first, they would be entitled to its name. But this was not necessarily the case. General Foods had actually filed for a trademark on the word Pringles for foods and ingredients of foods in June 1968. And it was registered in July 1969. Procter & Gamble, on the other hand, had not filed a trademark application for Pringles at all. Now, this was a big problem for both companies. A brand name could be the difference between life and death of a new product. As Walter Margules, a marketing executive whose company Lippincott & Margules had designed logos for American Express, Chrysler, Amtrak, and Coca-Cola, told reporter MJ Wilson, Most of the names you can think of today seem to be taken. What makes finding a good one all the harder is that many of the new products that come out, like soaps and cigarettes and cars, are basically alike in function and appearance. The name is sometimes the only tangible difference between one brand and another. Selecting a name could require teams of marketing and design consultants, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and months of research. Despite these stakes, Procter & Gamble's decision to use Pringles was partially left up to fate. The name was reportedly picked, quote, out of the hat. P&G liked the name because it sounded like a family surname. Similarly, General Foods had reportedly chosen Pringles because it, quote, had a family appeal and gave the product a hometown ring. At the time, most potato chip manufacturers were local, shipping within only a few hundred miles to ensure freshness. Because of this, it was not uncommon for chip brands to be named after the people that made them. Both brands of Pringles snacks were non-traditional chips with Procter & Gamble's chips being made from dried potato flakes and General Foods being made from popcorn. So it makes sense that both P&G and General Foods would want a name that made their non-traditional chips seem as familiar to traditional potato chips as possible for consumers. But what wouldn't have made sense was for both companies to keep the same name for their chips. Things could have gotten nasty. Similar disputes over two similar trademarks for the same type of product have led to lawsuits before. But it never got that far for General Foods and Procter & Gamble. Perhaps because General Foods had a trademark and Procter & Gamble did not. Instead, the two companies came to a kind of understanding. General Foods agreed to relinquish its trademark on Pringles, possibly for an undisclosed amount of money. The agreement allowed General Foods to continue to use the Pringles name for its pop chips while they were in test markets, but they would change the brand name afterwards. 
Procter & Gamble took over the Pringles trademark in 1970, and the trademark and the brand remain alive and well today. The same cannot be said for General Foods Pop Chips, however. The product never made it out of test markets and was never given a new brand name. But the idea of popcorn chips didn't die there. The concept has been resurrected multiple times, including by General Mills Pop Secret in the 1990s and Pop Chips in 2007, a brand which you can still buy today. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video is a little shorter than usual. I was working on a different topic and it's just taking me a little longer than I expected to get everything together for it, so I decided to go ahead and put this video out in the meantime. If you like this video, you may also be interested in my longer video about the history of Pringles, or my video about the trademark dispute between Nabisco's Chips Ahoy and Hershey's Chip Away. I'll link both below. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.